it's me here again everybody um today i would like to do a quick video on some few pressing thoughts in my mind and i want you to um go along with me now in case you're a singer and uh, you've been wondering where do i sing what kind of choir should i join should i join an orthodox choir or a praise team orthodox church or a contemporary church entirely now you've got a voice and you don't really know what to do this is the um, right channel to to join up with now i want to make some uniqueness in each of these choirs and i want you to be able to make your own decision about what you want to do number one i'll be talking about the orthodox church choir now the orthodox church choir these are the choir that are exclusively singing hymns, anthems, and special songs like classical pieces. Now, number one, if your flair of music is towards such and you can sing, you should be considering that joining the can that kind of a choir. Now, number two, Orthodox church choir usually sing in four parts soprano alto tenor and bass now joining the choir you need to know whether you're in soprano they have to take you through some um, checks um, soprano alto tenor and bass and there's a particular way these parts interweave into one another when they sing and usually the soprano sings the melody i've had some cases of some singers they like to sing the melody, but their voice range is in alto. And they kind of find it difficult to sing alto parts, especially in the Orthodox choir. So you really need to go through the third point, which I want to mention. And that is, you must be able to listen and be able to sing all the notes given to you in a choir. Number four, I'm going to talk more again about this, that, that statement, but let me move to number four. Number four is you must be able to sight-read music for you to really function properly in an Orthodox church choir. You must be able to sing with musical notations, your staff notations, your treble clef, your bass clef. You need to understand it very well and to know how to sing it very well. There are numerous books and videos out there that can teach you on how to do that, or you can um, get a teacher that is going to teach you how to sight read music. And if you want me to do that for you, you can always contact me to do that. The number, under the same category of number four, if you can't sight read music, then you must be able to sing tonic sulfur. Because in this kind of music, they're already structured. The hymns, they've got the written parts, they've got the written notes there. So they're already specified. So it's now so important that you are able to sing these parts or sing in tonic sulfur. So take notes of that. Now, going back to the third point which I raised, which is about listening. I'm going to expatiate a little bit more on that. Now, for you to be a singer, you need to understand that it's a collection of notes that are being played to you that you are able to follow. That is fundamental. I know, like I said, some people are like in auto voices and they, they love to sing hymns, they love to sing classical, but they cannot be in the soprano line, but they're having trouble singing the auto line again. Now, this is the remedy for you. Just hear the note and sing those notes. Sometimes auto notes in the classical um, setting is kind of funny. It doesn't sound melodious, but when you put it together with the soprano part, it's so lovely. Then you add the tenor to it and you add the bass to it. It's so fantastic. So you are like a part of a jigsaw puzzle. You don't look beautiful on your own. You don't look like the structure on your own. But when it's mixed up with other parts, you begin to sound nice. So that is that about um, you need to know. So let, let me just give you a simple test. 
to know that if you can be able to do this and how well you can do that. I'm going to play some few notes and I want you to be able to follow it. One, two, three, go. Are you able to follow that? Now, if you're able to follow that, that's good. If not, rewind the video and um, cross-check that again. The next one is this. One, two, three, four. Now, this is just a simple demonstration or to sensitize you about ability to listen to a note and sing along. Now, you know, and it's in him singing that it's quite long. So you must be able to sing in chunks and be able to follow as well. All that being said about Orthodox choir. Now, into a contemporary, talking about the contemporary church choir now, where they sing a lot of praise songs. These are short songs or moderately long songs that are repeated several times. So, it's a little bit, the style, the arrangement is kind of different to the uh, Orthodox choir. Fundamentally as well, you must be able to listen properly. In contemporary church, you don't necessarily be able, need to be able to read music fundamentally, but you must be able to listen. And then you must be able to listen to recordings and pick your part out. In the contemporary church choir or praise band or praise team, you don't need a bass part. You only need three parts. So in contemporary choir or praise band, there are just three parts. Soprano, alto, tenor. Then the question comes, my voice is baritone. How do I, and I love to sing in the contemporary church. What do I do? In that case, if you're a baritone voice, it's either you sing the melody like the soprano, so that soprano or the tune, let me put it that way, not necessarily soprano, you must be able to sing in the bandwidth. It's either you sing the melody or you double up on the alto line or tenor line, as the case may be, with respect to key. Uh, like I said in my other video that in a contemporary setup, um, harmonic structure. Sometimes when your lead vocalist is um, an alto singer, then the part that sopranos is most likely going to be singing tenor. Whilst the tenor singers or tenor voice range sings the alto part. The alto then sings the melody. And that's a clear difference between contemporary church choir or contemporary singing that requires drums or when you have to sing choruses or you have to sing contemporary songs, contemporary praise songs. The melody line changes. It can be either be soprano or alto or even the tenor singing the melody. And when such things happen, the other parts will have to swap around to maintain that three parts. Now, in contemporary singing, harmonization, the parts, they go in parallel to one another. The, if the melody is going up, every other part is also going up. The other part is going to sing. Then the other part is going to sing. As simple as that. So the three of them singing. I'll play that again. And when you know to sing this, it's easy to sing harmonization in harmony in contemporary music more than the um, classical because in the Orthodox Church Choir, the auto line does or the tenor line does not follow that pattern. They come up and down, up and down, up and down, whilst the melody may be going up. You know, for example, Even though the melody is doing this, 
del the, the style of singing is different so you need to understand that but in contemporary music it's just straightforward if the melody is doing that it's most likely going to be doing in harmonization so that is very key now one point that i left out in orthodox singing is in orthodox choir there is no lead vocalist in contemporary church choir there is a lead vocalist that kind of directs how the song is going to go with his own melodious way or ad libbing style pointing the direction of the song sometimes the ad lib to bring in different lines of the tune or the song especially when you sing in the praise and worship they don't necessarily sing the melody all through with the backup singers they all they always put in ad libs and in and out of the of the music so that is very important to know then in contemporary singing you must be rhythm conscious because contemporary music depends solely on drums and bass which are the rhythm section of the band there's what's called like a groove you need to be stable you need to understand rhythms how it turns around one two three four one and the, 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 the structure is like repeated and the rhythms flow now you need to be conscious of that if you have seen some people they can sing well um, in the orthodox choir but when they come in they find it difficult to sing in rhythm alongside with the rest so you have to learn that you need to understand how to sing such music then you need to have flair for such music if you want to join a contemporary church choir you, you cannot be um, a lover strict lover of um, orthodox choir and you you find yourself in a contemporary you are going to have a contemporary choir you're going to have a, a little bit of trouble uh, fixing yourself up properly these are the major differences and similarities between this choir now the choice is yours now which choir do you want to join i hope this video has helped you a little bit and I'd like to read from you in case you're just joining this channel via this video. I want you to subscribe and I want you to um, share this video. Um, thank you so much for watching this. I hope to see you another time. Till I come your way next time. Bye for now.